Hello everybody, I'm Strategic Primus, and I'm back for part two of our Heathen Horde Let's Play. I'm here with King Gufried Vjorvik, his wife Asta, the Dutes, who's apparently pregnant, that's awesome. Also known as the son of our dearly departed Halfden. As we left off, Halfden is dead, however we've won his wars for him, which is quite good. It's time to set focuses, councils, and try to make sure that the secession continues. I'm going to fix up combat, because having 30 marshals sounds absolutely amazing. Plus, we're already one hell of a uh, duelist at, at this point. Personal combat school, 9. And a little bit more won't ha ever hurt us. So at the moment, I'm going to go with um, Convert a Province, because we have a lot of Christians under us, and I'd like to turn some of them into being Norse themselves. That will solve some problems. I'm going to set my crown fo focus in Jorvik. Go over here. Deal with some problems. Now, my Chancellor is utterly terrible, however, it's my brother, my half-brother, who I have to keep in line. And frankly... I need to keep him in line, and he's bad at everything, so I'd rather just have a bad Chancellor. Anything else in here I might want to change? Spymaster, and eh, I'll keep her. So I'm going to go over here and realize that the thing that I didn't do yet, which is auto-stop plots, hasn't appeared to have been a problem yet, but I realized I forgot to do it while watching the first video. And I'm going to hold the blot, because frankly they're amazing, and we have three prisoners, so let's get blotting. After all, I have to kill all these silly Christians. Making sure that these guys are actually Norse, yes, good. And let's march the men back to Lincoln, yes, good. I'll let time start. Ah, guests have arrived. The time's come for the blot to begin. You gather outside the temple and start by offering animals as sacrifices to the gods. While the meat is prepared for the feast that is to follow, the blood is sprinkled on the statue of Odin, Thor, Threyr, and the other gods, as well as on the worshippers themselves. Now for the human sacrifice. The best part. <clears throat> so this bishop that came to convert us, we are, of course, uh, well, hanging him. Where's your blessed version now, Veen? One down. And this silly Reeve I thought he could fight us. We're blotting him, too. I'm going to focus on the center during all this, apparently. And this silly monkey is also going to die. Let the celebrations begin. And all my vassals love me more. Well, all my Nordic vassals love me more. Which is all my vassals, so, you know, details. I'm going to call my that down. Oh, right, John Vikings are here. Ah... Uh, I could get the money if I want to. I don't even have all that much at the moment. I was losing from having all those men up. I'm going to call off my commanders from this. Put it back down to... Let's call it Anfer. Get it married, though. Because getting your courtiers married means you get more courtiers without having to pay for them. Which is something that I did not check to do earlier, and the game doesn't always do it for you, so... I'm gonna make sure damn sure. Make sure that this alliance stays. Any other packs? Uh, yep. Utes. Or Jute. I could join his war for Mercia here, but I'd rather him not go in there, such that I have a Christian nation to easily expand into. He's probably gonna win it anyway. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just not going to encourage it. I do not care too much if he actually wins it. <clears throat> One of the courtiers always treat the servants with contempt, and if I hadn't interfered, the courtier would have likely been beaten. One of the servants. I reprimanded the courtier and said, Kindness is a virtue, and you should show empathy and trust without prejudice, even if your servant is a commoner. I hope he listened. He probably didn't. Eh, of course. Eh, well, at least I'm known as a kind king, which is good. For some things, not for others. So yes, as you'll see, uh, we've started quite the body count here. Hopefully we can continue to grow the realm, and I wish to take most of what is, well, eventually known as England, for Jorvik. 
problem is, we have several other Jarls who are encroaching in on this conquest, namely Ivar the Boneless, who I am allied with, and the Ute, the Jute, who I am also allied with. So the problem is my allies are about to block me down through getting into Mercia, which is going to be a bit of a problem, as I would be a truce breaker if I was to go to war with Mercia again for the rest of the pieces I want. Now this isn't too much of a problem, I can wait till my father-in-law or my wife dies and just press my claims for the bits that are of uh, the de jure uh, Yaldor of York. And I think I'll probably end up doing that unless this war goes sideways on the Yatlands, or the Jutes, who is of Yatland, and this Mercian King somehow manages to actually win a war. I doubt he will. The other thing is, I want to make sure that Alfred the Great here doesn't actually take over Wessex, or that if he, or that if he does, I know about it. So I'm going to make him a uh, noted character because, frankly, I don't want to be at war with Wessex when he becomes king. If he becomes king, hopefully Alfred here will uh, stay king for a nice long time because that way, uh, all this wonderful uh, Vikings will continue to just tromp over England without too much opposition from. Wessex, because his marshal is much lower, so he can raise much fewer men. Yeah. Basically, if Alfred becomes king, we're going to have a bad time. Especially if we're trying to declare war directly against Wessex. I'm going to let time continue to trickle. Um, the council's uh, discontent because we had a re recent uh, secession. And we'll continue for a little while now, for another five months, Eve. Uh, and the other problem is, most of our uh, council are pragmatists, so we need to be wary of them. Other than Mats here, who's a good glory hound, like all Norsemen should be. <clears throat> Slovia has dragged his unfaithful spouse before me, sis, I should punish her. She's my uh, spy master, so this is a waste of my time, and my spy li master likes me more. Good. That's who she's sleeping with, apparently. Who knew? Oh, I did. Wahahaha. Ahem. Rethir here? That's a hard name to say. That's Half Dan, yes, after Dad. Oh, we already have Half Dan. Oh, fear. There we go. There we go. Hopefully, young Half Dan doesn't die of this. my claims. I could go make the Duchy of Northumbria, but I have a high chance of losing it just due to secession problems, and I don't think I have quite enough prestige, money, or piety to go crown myself king anytime soon. So I'm going to wait to build all that up. And my wife is very sick and has cancer, so she's not probably long for this world. I'm going to call for my physician, because that's the point of physicians, after all. Who knows? Maybe we get lucky and she keeps living. If we if she dies on us, it means I don't have an alliance with Jyland, so I can go start pressing claims on things that I need. Uh, but at the same time, I lose a good alliance, a young 20-year-old attractive wife, and quite frankly, that's not all that good either. Oh no. So my Godi has uh, messed up the procedure, and uh, I'm going to kill him for it, because that's what happens when you mess up operations on my wife, and you're knowledge was only a 12 to begin with, so goodbye. Ah, another body. Excellent. Let's go over here to see if I can't find a better seer. I can! Good. Get her on proselytizing in the Dunhold. Go over here. Oh, no. Might not have to recruit a physician. I can go over here. No valid candidates. I have to recruit a physician. That tends to be a little bit expensive and a lot annoying. Let's see what factions I have. I have a court faction. So, in, in, unlike in vanilla, where all the factions are going to be uh, people trying to depose you and that sort of thing, uh, the factions in CK2 Plus tend to be more towards uh, general groups that want certain things out of your kingdom. Uh, this is the court faction. They tend to like uh, parties, 
tax privileges, low crown authority, and basically they like being powerful lords. Um, holding feasts and tournaments makes them very happy. And, like, and all these factions can a lot off of having people on the council, as well as getting into their uh, the claims and helping them. Uh, the move is worsened by uh, high crown authority, high taxes, and you can read. Basically, I'm going to try to uh, not tick off the entirety of the realm because I'm only 26, and yes, I'm quite a good character. My sibling here is not, so my error would be absolutely terrible. So if I end up dead, which could occur, uh, to one of my counselors here, who would be my heir, um, he's really not good. And I don't want him to be your. These kids, we can probably make into being alright. Problem is, it will take time, because they're only one or two. <clears throat> My spy monster master reports that a heretical sorcerer has been caught in jail in the city of Boston. Oh boy. The sorcerer has apparently healed various ailments and affliction afflicting the other prisoners. Sorry, I cannot talk at the moment. Although he's scheduled for execution at noon, you can pardon him and bring him to your employ. I do need a physician. He's only a 12, but at least he can actually serve as a physician, and he's a mystic, and they can be occasionally pretty good at being an actual physician. I take a strategic and piety hit, but I get to keep a physician around, which is a necessity in this game. I'm gonna get him married off, just cause I need to have more courtiers. We have a very young court. Well, the old man died, so... These things didn't happen, I'm gonna up my things. Uh, I'm going to give a position to Ragnar there, such that he likes me a bit more and doesn't try to kill me. Uh, I'll name him my scald. I'm just going through titles. Matt sounds like a Hurgan. Uh, make him like me too. Basically what I'm doing here is just making sure that enough of the realm likes me just enough, or more than just enough, to actually give me men and levies and strengthen my position and hold on them. It's not entirely necessary, but it's a good thing to do, just to make sure that you don't get uh, mutilated by your courtiers. Ah. Chance to gain gregarious. Uh, the peddler selling all sorts of food, clothing, and exotic spices and luxuries, such as glass and jewels, filled the town square with her wares and shouts. I'm definitely going to pick up uh, gregarious, because thing, spending money on babbles isn't all that great as opposed to what this does to for you, which, uh, as you can tell, makes everything just a bit better. Yeah, I lose some stewardship learning, but I already had terrible learning and terrible stewardship. I can attempt to imprison him uh, if he doesn't cancel this plot. I think he just did. Yes, he did. Good. Let's continue. So another problem we have here is my brother actually has a very large amount of land. He has this, 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 and that. That's four of these uh, counties. And quite frankly, even though he's a terrible marshal, he can still call upon nearly 2,000 men, which is far less than I can call upon. But remember, I have to, uh, in this, there's also his from vassals. So, eh, and those vent spawn men, so who knows. My wife has died, oh no. So that alliance is broken down with the jutes, and it means that my chance of having more children with uh, her are now zero, because she's dead. <clears throat> and apparently from the dead, it's a question of, uh, do I take care of her or not? Uh... Yeah, I would do my best to care for her. Uh, she's dead already. No need to rub salt in it. Alrighty, now we're back on the marriage market. The Half Moon So is not a bad choice. Um, she's nothing amazing, but it is a, 
an alliance with a king, as in a proper king, as in a kingdom tier king, not just people who call themselves kings, like me. Um, oof. Oof. Fair hair got him. That's terrifying. Um, she's not all that great. She's also my cousin, which is a little bit of a problem, uh, or it could be if we continue to do this sort of thing. Um, but it brings me in a Norseman from way over here, as opposed to where I am, uh, with 1,000 men, which isn't all that much, and it will drag me into some of these conflicts, probably with the fair hair, who has more men. Um, I'm going to go for it, largely for the prestige. Look over here, select me, because I get a, I get 100 uh, prestige, 126 prestige for marrying this chick, and I get, at the very least, a defensive pact with a king. So boom, there we go. She's also 20 on 26. This is not bad. Uh, let's go over here. Uh, I'm going to see if he will accept an alliance. He won't. So there's not too much of a worry of uh, getting dragged into his wars, which I suppose isn't all that bad. And it means I get to mess with Jylans uh, once they finally take Mercia. And we're waiting for a little bit here. I need a new designated regent. Somebody that likes me, I'll make it my new wife. Uh, as I recall, the previous region was my old wife. Uh, <laughs> this sort of things are are uh, a stabilizing force in your realm because if you die and your heir is actually your son, uh, having your wife be the regent means that your wife will actually have a high opinion of the son if it's actually her son too. Um, if it's not, uh, well, basically what's happening here is if I get captured in battle, she's my regent and she likes me a lot. This is 91, which is pretty good. Um, you know, that's that's a solid, like, 100 is max score, so we're only 9 points down, um, which basically means that I can almost assuredly uh, not get stuck in a hole forever. I just noticed that I'm King Gufrid the Butcher of Jorvik, which sounds amazing for a Norse king. I'm going to let time continue. Hopefully this council will calm down. I can claim Stalin. From the Snake in the Eye, which are the Kingdom of the Isles here, which is half of what is now Denmark traditionally, that's picked up a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, he only has 700 men. I have a butt ton of men. I also call in Ivar the Boneless. I'm doing it. That's it. The guys who are coming to England to conquest that are instead going back and reclaiming home as well. Because why not? The problem is I do not have all that much of a fleet. So I'm going to look down here and see if I have a transport company that's cheap. No, I don't have enough money. That's fine, I guess. The problem with being Norsemen in England is these are not traditional Norse lands. Uh, so you don't get as many boats. I'm, I'm only running with 20-something fleet. 20-something ships, I believe. Which is a bit of a problem for this sort of thing. I'm going to call in Ivar the Boneless because he was my uncle after all. I'll do nothing for now for that. Now, he's in Wilgrad. Sounds like, as I recall, it's, yep, it's down here. So he's dealing with the Sorbians, probably raiding them. Um, he shouldn't have all that many men back at home. Yep, small garrison. I think we can very easily win this. Quick, easy, and ruthless wars tend to be the ones you want to get involved in. Um, I'm going to deselect that unit. 28, right? And deselect that unit. Form these guys together. 24, that's close enough. I'm going to bark my army. Fix my commanders first. Alpha. Methil. And of course, Griffith in the center, where he belongs. Okay, good, Jarl. And we're going to sail back to the Norse homeland to claim a crown that should have been mine all along. We'll land back on uh, 
sail and send the ships back for more men because you can always use more men. Might make the difference here. The good news is I get to use these straits in my favor as opposed to actually having to uh, you know, land in Gotland and head over, or in Skeen and head over. I'm actually being able to use some of these. Ah, good. Now you can tell I'm fighting someone of my own religion, I don't have that option where I have to either take uh, prestige and, and uh, piety losses if I tell them not to kill everyone. Now I have options that I can take because they're my own religion. This is not, you know, proving that Odin is better. This is, you know, we take it a tribe, and eh, what do we want to do with them? I'm still going to try to imprison anyone of importance because, frankly, prisoners are good to have. For a multitude of reasons, that includes ransom, ransom, and plots. All of which are things that you tend to like to do. I'm gonna just keep sieging here. They don't have all that much of an army. And are they heading there? Nope, they're not. Excellent. I'm gonna call my boats back. I can't pick up that large of an army, so I'm just gonna call down the boats, because if I'm lucky, we won't need them. Alrighty. Hmm. Small chance of getting just. 57% chance of successful capture of this Godi. Or, sorry, Gidea. I was tempted. I've succeeded. Very good. I'm heading to Fleen now. And we're just going to keep sieging these things. I'm trying to avoid an actual open battle. I'm going to attempt to gain temperate here. Good. Uh, and of course the uh, wonder is not another node. Zealous and all that goodness. Okay. They have 500 and some odd men here. I'm going to keep taking this tribe, take it, and then come back and fight them. Very good. And here we go. They're now going to fall upon my allies down here. That will stop them. And back we go. Hopefully I can crush them. Ah, fighting time. I'm a very good person in combat, so of course I'm charging. Uh... That Valdemar is running away like the coward he is, which is good to know. Boom, taken. I'm not going to catch those men. I'm going to go around and take the rest of his land, because taking land is good. My council is finally recontent, and I believe we have the best guys at the best job. Yeah, he is better. Good. For what I can get away with the Conclave. Prison anyone of importance. Because I like getting more prisoners, because you can sell them back, or kill them, or make them have you favors. All good things. Hopefully we can just gain some more war score. There's nobody doing anything sneaky over here. Nope. Ivar hasn't sent all that many men. I guess he's reassembling a fleet. To send more. Who knows. Ah, no. Somewhere with me and somewhere over there. Okay, that's about what I expected out of them. Alright, good. We're taking the tribe. Let's now take the temple. Ah, excellent. Command are getting better. Uh, yeah, that's going to take a prisoner. More prisoners, more fun. Ah! The Magyar, who are going to become the Hungarians, have finally settled down and are calling themselves Hungarians now. These are dead. And so it's Arapad of Arapad making hungry hungry and actually so somewhat sedentary as opposed to 
meandering around all over the place. They are still Serengi, however. Actually, let's look at what religion's doing today. Uh, it appears Chalcedonianism is largely holding most of Europe together. They have some small heresies. Tiny things here and there, as Paulicians over here. And nothing all that bad. Uh, they appear to be approaching the Slavic territory pretty quickly. Uh, we've done them a bit of a damage up here in England. And they appear to be encroaching on traditional... Nope. They appear to have... Ah! The Dutch are in the Colorado Empire now. Right. That would do it. Meaning that is technically Christianizing slowly. Which is always a bit of a problem. I'm going to quickly end this war here, which is excellent, and I'm going to now go over here, flip him, I'm going to make uh, this guy my marshal, actually he's just going to hate me no matter what, I'm going to make this guy my marshal, I'm going to try to get the other guy killed, commanding something, because that's just what you do. And back to my territory. And I've probably incurred a bit of a reputation from this. Yep, I am threatening. I've acquired a lot of stuff very quickly. Meaning that everyone else around me is going to form packs and stuff together. Uh, basically making it such that if I am to attempt to continue a campaign, I'm going to have one hell of a problem if I do it now. As I pick up advantage over here. Yep, this one. It's tiny. Frankly, it's tribal. Let's see if I can't work at making this feudal. Because I am feudal. Ah, uh, her. Uh, that's a clear release here, but she can pay me later, because having people with favors is usually a good thing, especially if they're in your own empire. And this one I'm just going to release, she'll just relate me even more. Ah, uh, this broken marriage again. Uh, yeah, I'm going to end up blocking him with stock, because this makes my spot master like me even more, and gains me piety. Even though they've both cheated a bajillion times, and I, I don't want to deal with this. <laughs> the role of the Earl is not to play court politics. The role of the Earl is to take things over, which I've done a pretty good job of. Hmm. Request honor for a council position has been postponed long enough. He thinks it is questionable that Ragnar is allowed in council when he isn't. I'm going to... The problem is Ragnar really is bad, and I'd rather have Arnie on the council. The problem is... Uh, he's a more powerful vassal, much closer at home, with way more men. And this guy's a nobody-nobody with 500 guys way the hell over here who I don't even care about. So, yes, the council's for important people. Even though he's way better at being a counselor, he simply just isn't worth my time. Speaking of, I want to make sure I'm placating enough vassals. He's gotten better, at least. Let's continue. Ah, my Marshal Holmgur Hammer has told me about a remarkable weaponsmith residing in Snottingham. Wait, that's over the machine border. Wait a minute. Okay. Suggest I invite the man to my court to see his work for myself. If he managed to impress me, I should order my custom-made weapons. Fine idea. I don't have all that much coin on hand, so I'm probably not going for anything all that expensive, but it's always good to do this sort of thing. It is true, you can never go wrong with a good sword. I'm pretty sure you can go for it. He's one hell of a fighter. Yeah. Good sword. Uh, 
as much as I wanted to spend the 400 gold to get the plus 2 combat skill, it didn't work so great last time, and it costs a lot of money. So I'm going to go with 180, which is much closer to the amount of money we actually have on hand, and actually still does something for me. We'll make up 40 some odd gold pretty quickly. Especially people keep trying to convert me. Or I can always do it the old fashioned way and just raid them. Which, I suppose, is rewarding. So here we go. Put these guys together. Tell them to join me on this raid. Yeah, lightly armed engagement rating is right. Uh huh. Just bring 5,000 men over the border and hit something hard in the middle of a war. So they have two murder blobs to deal with. I'm not sure how much money we're going to make from doing this, but it will at very least be entertaining and a good use of men. Huh. My brother has appeared to have died under suspicious circumstances. Good. I didn't like him all that much. It frees up the counselor position, and frankly, it gets rid of a thorn on my side with way too much land. As his son split up his little Yarldom, or Demi Yarldom, he wasn't actually named a Yarl. And I have apparently inherited Cumberland. It split up. Okay. Ah, uh, Sacrifice Stone. Oh, I made quite a good bit of money. Excellent. Let's just keep raiding. More sacrifices for Odin. Ah, we have a challenge. Matt's here doesn't like me very much. He's a powerful vassal, and he thinks himself a good duelist. So he's going to challenge me to a home gang, which is how the Norse dealt with all sorts of disagreements. I'm one hell of a duelist as well, so let's do this. My axe will carve you a new smile, because my sword's not done yet. Uh, you can tell this bit is lifted from the Game of Thrones mod, which I will be playing later at some point. Uh, but quite frankly, it fits decently enough. One mistake is all he'll get. Strike! And boom, Matt's is dead. And I ha inherit Westmoreland off of him, so I'm going to have to start making some new lords. Victory is mine. 200 prestige. Now... I have some rather good generals down here who don't have land yet. Namely, this guy. I've just been having problems with my spy master for so long, so I'm not going to touch them with a 30 foot pole, so I don't want to have to deal with that. Let's see, anyone else out here who's any good? Uh, he's not. But he's my physician, so no. How about him? Oh, God. They're all terrible. Aspiorn. Not bad. Pretty good stewardship. He's strong. His line will be decent. Let's give him something or another, just because we need to lose him. Mm, give him Westmoreland. No. Let's give him uh, the thing out over here. Blickling. Just so we can stay consolidated. And I don't have to worry about what's happening on the bit of Sweden we have. Alrighty, Daddy. Call in these busy raiders, keep this bit of raider going. And we'll burn down this church. Sacrifices to Odin. Very good. I have gained the trait Viking, which is amazing. And we'll head home to Yorvik to sit on our newly acquired wealth. Because wars cost money. Resign off all my commanders. The usual drill. I'll give it to... Snake in the Eye, who is my uncle, and will be a bit of a pain in my backside. So hopefully he'll die. Ahem, I believe one of your vassals can be discouraged from associating with conspiratorial factions that the profit leverage is obtained. I'm going to not ask politely, because he absolutely despises me. I stole his Jarldom, after all. I've acquired Northumber 
Northumberland and other titles from Saint my nephew Sigmorn, and this side of the Hisferic line is just dying off ridiculously quickly. And I need to go find somebody else to hold land for me. Alright, guys. Really becoming my best option here. Wait a minute. I had an uncle. He's a brother half dead. Is he still alive? Yes, he is. He has a host, though. I don't know if I can get him to... Nope. Can't give him land. That's a shame. Uh, um, he hates me. This cousin of mine is off the rank of guard, so I can't give it to him. I'm basically just trying to find somebody decently well enough connected to us that I can acquire them. Uh, no such luck. I'm going to go over here and promote a commander. Excellent. And I'm going to give him some land. Namely, I believe I'm going to be giving him uh, Cumberland and Westmoreland. Cumberland and Northumberland. Yeah, there we go. He can be my Scottish border. And let's continue. We've increased the size of the realm quite considerably, actually. Mercia is still dealing with problems, which is good. And boom! Jutes have acquired Mercia. Meaning we are surrounded by Norsemen. As a Norseman, meaning expansion is going to be a little bit of a problem, uh, but such is life. This is a Christian right there, after all, and they're still Welsh. And I still have this nasty defensive pad just slowing me down, which I don't really want to deal with. Even though I probably could kick the entirety of the defensive pack's ass, I just don't want to. Because it will cost more men, more lives, and more time to do so. Also because my dynasty is beginning to teeter on the edge of a knife here, as everyone is just dying. You know, we're down to one nephew, myself, and my two sons. Speaking of, I'm going to tell my second son to focus on pride. That makes some good generals. Anyway, that will be all for this episode. I hope to see you in the next installment, which I hope to make this series a bit more regularly updating. Every couple of days should be about what you should expect, and I will see you next time. Please, uh, if you like this content, like and subscribe. I'm Strategic Supremus, and this has been Jorvik, the Great Heathen Horde. Thank you. Have a good day.